Hello and welcome. Danny Garola here with Pink Barn Stamper coming to you from a nice fall like Tucson, Arizona. It is absolutely stunning right now. I am so happy that we are finally getting the fall weather setting in here. I almost felt like it was never going to happen, but um, since it has happened, I have gotten my barn set up where I can start doing my videos out here. So this is pretty much my first video out here in the barn. I am so excited to be coming to you guys from out here. It has uh, been a work in progress, let me tell you. But it has happened and that is fabulous. And there's nothing like, you know, trying to get everything up and going. I, I've just been really kind of working on how I want everything set up. So uh, I kind of had a change of plans yesterday as I was setting things up. So I got things reorganized the way that I want them. And I really love my new setup. This is working perfectly for me. And it really feels like I have so much space. As you guys can see, I'm back at the old desk that I used to use over at my mom's house. She bought herself a new desk. So she uh, so graciously gave me this one. This one is so wide and so big that I can actually have everything set up here. I have my computer on here. I've just got everything right here that I need. And I love that. And so for that, we are going to have so much fun. Today, I am going to be sharing with you guys the nests of Christmas. Now, this is the October paper pumpkin. Now, we are in the current rotation for subscription period, the filled with joy. This is the one that you can subscribe to now. This is going to come with um, not our eight little fabric stockings super super cute these are going to be make great for gift tags um little candy that you can put in there for gift making um or gift giving this is again this is the november kit this is available for you to subscribe to through november 10th um it says celebrate christmas with adorable stockings and gift tags make eight projects eight stockings with eight gift tags, pre-cut paper pieces, safety pins, and specialty foil. And it's going to come in this really, really cute, um, unique box that they have designed for this kit. So that is wonderful. Also, right now, to go with the quarter, so October, November, and December, we have the Merry Tags and More Dies as an add-on to coordinate with this quarter's paper pumpkin kits. So this is a really, really cute die cut set here that you can add on to your projects. And so you've got this really big tag that I'm only assuming that they have created for those stockings. There's a really cool little fern, um, like leaf piece here for a die. And then you have the word Mary which I actually die cut one today. This is the Mary. So I'm gonna try to put that on my one of my projects that I have created for you guys today as far as my alternatives go. So I just want to um, make sure you guys are aware of all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of each one of the cards that were intended in this kit. And then I'm gonna move on to my uh, three cards that I have created for you guys as far as alternatives. And I made a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout that I have absolutely fallen in love with. You guys are gonna love it too. So uh, stay tuned, let's start getting um, these created here. So in each one of your paper pumpkin kits, it is going to come 
in a cute little box just like this. So the really cool thing about these boxes is once you've used the content in it, you can then um, gift these boxes. These boxes are great. You can put cards and envelopes in here and wrap this up and gift this. The box, um, this box that they did, the Nests of Christmas, they also did a cute little bird on here to match this one. Um, but your contents will be all inside of this. You're going to get all your envelopes that you need um, for this month. You're going to get, uh, this one came with uh, uh, 10 cards. You got five of each of the two. So um, very, very cool for your upcoming holiday card giving and mailing. So in each kit, you're also going to get the adhesive that you need. They've actually even cut the little strips of ribbon that you're going to need to coordinate with these. Um, they've given you your uh, tear and tape adhesive, and they even show you what you need. And these two right here, it shows the breakdown of what you're going to need to create both of these cards. Then they go into step-by-step -step detail, like one two, three, four, and then so on. And then there's also, if they were to give you, like for instance, I've brought over my real red and white baker's twine that I'm going to be using for one of my alternative projects. If they were to give you a roll of some kind of ribbon or twine or something like that, um, there is actually a cool little ruler on the side of your pamphlet here that you can measure out the piece of length that you need because they will tell you this one doesn't come with any ribbon or any, I mean, any length or spool of ribbon that you need to cut. They've already got this pre-cut for you. But if you were to get that or receive anything like that, it would tell you on there that you need a 12 inch length to cut for a bow or whatever like that. So then you have this handy little measurement over here that you can use as needed, especially if you've taken this kit and you're on the fly. Like for instance, we like to travel. So when we travel, I'll take a kit or two and then I've got everything that I need right there in these handy little kits. So let's go ahead and move on with this. So I have got the pieces that I need for my first card here. We are going to be using uh, this piece here. So these come as a three layout. Um, you've got your three different folding pieces here. So it looks like this needs to be folded in and then I have to actually see what I'm doing here. Yep, it's gonna go just like so. So you've got your scoring already done on these for you. So then all you have to do is just take your bone folder and fold those down to give that a good crease. Now you're going to take this piece out because this is not gonna be needed, but I did use mine on my alternatives. So I did save that piece because that can um, be a layer to another card. I cut mine up for the pieces that I need. Also this month, you got a uh, shaded spruce Stampin' Spot. I'm actually going to be using my big Stampin' uh, pad because I already have that out here and it's already open. I don't open these because I save them for my classes. And then you have a stamp set. Now some of the stamps I have already um, mounted onto the little clear blocks that I need, but really, really cool stamp set in this month's kit. Okay. So it looks like for this one, they are telling us that we need to have this open like so, and I am going to need a piece of scrap here. Let me grab Mom. Grab just a piece of scratch paper over here so I can do some stamping and not get it all over the desk. Okay, so it looks like they're telling us that we're going to need the leaf, this little like spruce leaf here, and I'm going to need one of my blocks. Okay, we're going to need our shaded spruce. And it shows 
with this, they have come in here and they have rando stamped this down here in the corner. Okay, just like that. So then it shows your card getting folded back up like so. And this is actually going to go like this. This is going to be a landscape style card. Look at the foiling on that. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to set that aside. It says that we do need one of our little red ribbons. We're going to need our turn tape here. It also came with the dimensionals. It comes with a full sheet of dimensionals here. Oops, I grabbed out two of these. I only need one. And then what else do we need? I think that's it for the rest of this card. Oh, we do need one of the labels. We're going to need the cardinal and the larger piece of greenery. It says that we need to go ahead and stamp on here. So I've got my Merry Christmas already mounted onto my blocks here. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp Christmas. And then I'm gonna stamp Merry. Just like so, voila. Okay, close this up so I don't make a mess. And on here, it shows that we need to take our Terran tape, if I can find the end of it, and put a strip of this across our ribbon, like so. Then we need to peel this off. So this is normally where your take your pick tool, unless you have fingernails, I do not, especially as I've been moving into this barn, picking up all my craft stuff and the big totes and stuff that I have, I've pretty much broke every single one of my fingernails. Like, they're haggard, they look bad. Okay, I'm going to take my label now and this is gonna go right over the top of that ribbon, you're just gonna see a little, little bit of it there. Then we need to take, they show us putting four dimensionals on our label, just like that. Give those a good smoosh. It shows on our bird here, they put two dimensionals on him. And then on our little greenery here, they have also placed two dimensionals there as well. So let's get our card base here. So it looks like our, let me see if I can get a better crease on this. There we go. This is going to go right up here. So let's take our backings off of our dimensionals here. I hope it's not too echoey in here. I do have furniture, but we have not done the drywall yet. And I'm not sure if I will until maybe summertime, just because we, um, are cool right now. So I don't really feel that it's that necessary to have the wall walls on. If it was warmer then yes, because then it would insulate in here. But right now I don't think it is all that big of a deal. So I guess what it is showing us is that, and this is a good thing to share with you guys, that your 
dimensionals, when you place them on this, they need to be closer to the ends because if I'm to add this on here, the way that I have the dimensionals, my piece is gonna hang over. So see when I flip this, this is gonna hang over the side and that will not fit into an envelope. So you need to make sure that you move your dimensional down further or what I would suggest now, since I've messed that up and since I've now learned from my mistakes and hopefully you guys learn from my mistakes as well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off because what we don't want to happen is we don't want to adhere our card shut. And if I was to put those on there and move it where I wasn't hanging off the card base, this would not be functional because of the fact that it would close my card shut. So what I need to do is I need to look at this in the aspect that when I place those, so what I'm going to do and what I suggest is putting your dimensional actually on your border piece and then placing your piece down there. They do show you like where to put them, but it's not noted that it is important to keep your card open if you don't have your placement right. So as I'm doing this with you, I'm learning as well so there we go that is so much better so now my adhesive is not going to touch the inside layer because otherwise I won't be able to open my card if those dimensionals were touching now on the bird it's not really that big of a deal because your bird is going to sit on that piece it's just the sides of your greenery your little spruce that really are going to be important so we don't adhere our card shut with those dimensionals. So again, I would do the placement of your label where it's not hanging over and then tuck your dimensional inside of there while holding this in place so you know the placement that you're going to get. Just, just my thoughts on that. Okay, same with my bird's tail. I need to watch where I'm placing that tail so it doesn't hang over. So I'm going to just hold that like so and place my bird. Because that's the last thing we want is our images hanging over our card and then they don't fit in our gorgeous envelope. So these are the envelopes that we have for this month and it has that gold foil or that green foiling on there just like our cards have so this will now tuck into my envelope and see it's going to go past that and fit in there versus before when i had that hanging over the edge this would not have fit into my envelope so just be cautious of that when you're putting these cards together so isn't that so cute? Just a beautiful, beautiful Christmas card there. So that is card number one that is intended in this kit. Okay, let's do card number two. So I've got all my pieces here. I'm going to bring this back in so I can do some stamping. Um, it says that this is how we have to look at this. Again, we're going to pop out this piece. I would not throw this away. I would use this on another card. Um, I don't think, oh no, I cut that apart and I put it on one of my alternatives. So, but it could very well be as a, like look, if you were to take a regular card base, let me grab a card base here that I have. You could take this and put this on that, stamp some of your little green leaves around there up on your green part and then put your bird like you could do the birds 
just sitting in that like it's the little birds in the window. So I would say don't throw that away. You can definitely get another project out of that. I mean, if you want to utilize what you have. All right, so it says we need to take this. We need to fold this in and then again, we're going to take this and fold that and make sure we really get a good crease on that to hold that down. Isn't that pretty? Look at the colors of that. <clears throat> So now it shows that we need to grab our stamps here. Let me grab another block. And for this one, we're using, um, what does this say? Joyful thoughts to the season. I couldn't tell what that first word was in the little, because it's backwards on there. Okay, we're going to take that. And we're going to take our tag, another one of our little banners here, and we're going to stamp that in shaded spruce. We're going to need another one of our little ribbon pieces here. Get that really good and inked up. That's going to get stamped right in the center of that. I like to give it just a couple of seconds on there to let that marinate into that paper so we get a really nice crisp image. And then we take again on our little piece of ribbon here. Oh, that's a little too small, but I've ripped it so we'll use it. Okay, take the backing off of that, maybe. Wow, that's really stuck there. Okay, there's the next piece. All right, again, we're going to place this over the top of that. So pretty. Again, they have us putting four dimensionals on there. Okay, make sure those are on there. Now it shows us putting this in the center. Now we really need to watch those edges because we don't want this catching up on that because we want to be able to open it. So let's take our backings off. Okay, like so. I'm gonna hold this closed so I can really see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna bring this right like so and then push that down. So there we go, that opens. Okay, we've got that. Then we've got three of our little images here. We've got the bird with the sprigs. We've got a full piece of sprigs and then a little bird that kind of sits lonely. And again, we need to watch, but for this one, I think this bird goes underneath, but nope, I'm wrong. It actually goes on the outside too. Again, I would set this on here and put my dimensionals down. They're showing this one being on dimensionals, but yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set this here, watching my edges. I'm gonna grab my dimensional and I'm gonna place my dimensional on the actual border first. So placing that like so. Doing the same thing down here. Right like that, and then placing that on there. So I make sure that that is not hanging over the edge. Okay, you could probably get away with doing one more underneath this for a little bit more stability. Well, maybe not. Nope, that's not gonna work. Okay, so change your mind on that one. 
Um, let's go up here. This one now goes up here. So again, taking this, I would put this right up there, place that down. Now I will take another one, put it right underneath there, place that down. And the same over here. Now, if you're confident in where you can place these as they have shown on here, then you do you. But I really don't want to mess up this super cute project, so that's why I'm doing it like so. Okay, now this bird here is going to get one dimensional. So I will let you know that if you don't want all this dimension going on, because I do know that the Postal Service cannot run it through their little machine and they'll try to charge you more. I probably wouldn't put a dimensional on this one because you've already got these popped up on one level. Now this is gonna be popped up on another level. So you're gonna have a level and then another level here. Now, because this is not double layering over your dimensionals, it will probably go through the mail just fine. But just, I want you guys to know that sometimes the Postal Service does not like things with double layers. So just, just keep that in mind. So there is, isn't that so cute? Oh, I love that with that shimmer on there. It's just gorgeous. Okay, so those are the two cards. Now, like I said, you're gonna make 10 cards to our, of those two designs. So, um, you will come out with some beautiful Christmas cards for that. Now, let me show you what I have created for my alternatives. Okay, so the first one here, I'm just gonna bring this one in since I've got it handy. So what I'm going to do is grab all my little pieces and I'll tell you how I've done this. So I have a base, this is real red, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. I'm gonna burnish this down like so. I'm going to take my shaded spruce, which is four by five and a quarter. Then I have a little white piece. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. That is going to be my next layer. Then I have, which I'm gonna set that aside. I've got little one inch by one inch squares. I'm going to place these on here just like so, okay, like that. So let me get these adhered on here. My mom and my glue. And this is actually, you know, I had told you that I saved this piece from one of those cards. I actually use that, and that's what I cut these up with. And the same with this little piece. I cut a little one-inch square out of that for these. And then on that blue, I have taken one of my full card bases and cut off, oops, not that one. I cut, I took one of these card bases and I cut this, um, let me get this in here down and I'll show you what I did. Because since I made my scrapbook page too, I knew I was gonna utilize some of this. So I took this and I cut this on the score lines to give me three separate pieces that I could use. So I did that with each one of the card bases. I did that with one to give me more pieces that I needed for my alternatives. So do you guys have anything planned today for Halloween?
So I am currently, that's why this is a uh, live, not so live. Um, I am currently at a friend's house. We have decided to do Halloween with them. And um, we're going to be trick-or-treating in their neighborhood. They live in town. And we are trick-or-treating. We are having um, a good meal. Our friend's daughter decided that she was going to make a whole bunch of cute Halloween themed desserts. So she is um, come up with some amazing creations. Okay, so that is what I'm doing. Again, these are all one inch little squares. Um, let me get my stamps. Now I think I'm gonna do happy holidays on this. Or we could do joyful thoughts to you this season. But since I haven't used Happy Holidays, let's grab that and use it. Like so, we're gonna do that in the, I'm actually gonna do real red. I know um, if you have just the shade, shaded spruce, you can do that. But since my card base is in real red, I'm going to stamp this in real red. Okay, I'm gonna place that right like so. Now, I was actually thinking you could probably do, I don't think Christmas will work, but if you were to turn this sideways, you could probably do Christmas. But I was thinking if you were to do the Christmas, then you can grab this little word Mary and put that there. That would work. Or if you have a different stamp that has Mary on it, or you can stamp holidays and take a piece of your, uh, what are these called? Sticky notes and place it over the happy and just stamp holidays. And you could do Merry holidays. That would be cute. You could turn that kind of sideways and have that like so. So many, many different options for you. I'm also going to, I was thinking I need to stamp. I was gonna stamp the cardinal there, but I don't think there's quite enough space to do that. Um, we can take our little pieces here and we could place that like so. And I was thinking, huh, I don't like that. I think I'm just going to stamp my bird there. I think the bird is cute. And I might just let his tail hang over. So let me grab, I need my memento because I'm gonna color this bird in. So using memento, I can then come in with my Stampin' Blends. Now, if you want, you could always stamp him on a piece of scrap and then cut him out and put him on here. But I'm gonna go just like so. Just gotta commit. Okay. Now we do have some of these little greeneries, but no, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna do all that. All right, I am going to grab my real red. Is that real red? Oh, no, that's Melon Mambo. Hmm. Definitely don't want Melon Mambo, that's not good. I've moved my pens around, so now I have to get the knack of where I have them. Um, I think that is my smallest piece. Yeah, I don't like that on there. Um, let me see, is there anything else that I could put in place of that? Hmm. 
Yeah, no, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave it. I know it looks like it's kind of just sitting in space, but maybe once we get it colored, maybe it'll look um, a lot better sitting in space. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to take my dark real red and I'm just going to kind of put in a little bit of shadowing here on the little marks that we have. Okay, like so. Then I'm gonna come in with my light real red. And just blend over that dark. Now what I am doing is I am looking at the bird on here or you could use one of your um, birds that you have from the pieces to get your colors. Now, cardinals are our state bird here in Arizona, so it's so cute when we see these. And uh, just a couple of months ago, these were flying all over our trees outside. And it's so crazy because you've got this pretty bland desert that we live in where we are, and then all of a sudden you see these beautiful red birds just popping out, and it's just really kind of crazy. So then I'm going to come in with my light daffodil, or actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to use light peach pie. I think that would be, yes, that's more of the color of the beak. Okay, there's that. Okay, so there is that. We're going to adhere that right onto... So I think what I probably would have done differently on this, now that I'm looking at it, I would have taken this bird and I would have stamped it onto a scrap piece of basic white. I would have cut it out. Then I would have taken my greens and I would have stamped those around and then popped it up on top of the greenery. So this bird is not just kind of sitting there in limbo, but it works. It's still cute. Okay, and then I'm going to put that on there. Oops, shoot. I'm not going to do that yet. Hold tight. I told you guys that I was bringing in my real red and white baker's twine. Now, I have not used this yet, so let's see if we can find the end of it. There it is. I see it. I think I see it. I think I can. I think I can. Okay, I'm just gonna take that. And I'm gonna go right around the center here. Let's get this up a little bit higher. And I'm just gonna tie, attempt to tie a little bow. Maybe if it'll quit twisting on itself. Okay, let's pull that in a little bit. We gotta pull this out a little bit. Make our bow symmetrical here. Okay, let's grab our snips and snip this off. And then now what I really want this to be is right there at that center level. Okay, that's what I wanted there. That's what I wanted. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna place that right on my card front. And voila, card number one for my alternatives is done. What do you guys think of that? Isn't that cute? Oh, love it. Okay, now let's do card number two. So card number two is going to be a white card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have taken, like I said, I cut this piece off of that, but I do need to cut this down. I do want this to be um, at four by five and a quarter. Actually, I'm going to do it at four and one eighths by five and three eighths. But I'm going to cut a smidge off of each end to make it be there. Just so I keep everything even at the ends. So it's an eighth of an inch smaller than my base. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. like so hopefully I've made sure I've stayed within camera frame now that I just got up and looked at that looks like I have kind of just a sh small little space to work with here then I have taken my spotlight in nature dies um, let me grab those and show you what I have used, if I can find them now, because again, everything has been moved around. There they are. So Spotlight and Nature are this set of dies where this is an amazing set of circle dies. So you get two full sheets of your dies. So I have used the biggest one here for this and this is just the center of that card base so that's gonna go there then I have taken the one from the next card over and it's the second one here has that same little design it I cut that out of a piece of white so I'm going to adhere those two together Now these are kind of like nesting circles, so they kind of nest within one another. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to grab, I grab the biggest leaf here. This is going to come down in this corner. Then I have my bird. My bird is going to sit like so on this. I think I need to turn that just a little bit like that. So I'm going to adhere that down just a little bit in the center because I know it's going to sit on here. I can always turn my circle to get that placement where I want it. But I'm going to pop that bird up. Okay, my bird is going to sit right like so. Okay. 
Then on my label, I'm going to use another one of these little reds, but I'm going to take this and I'm gonna cut this in half. Maybe. I'm gonna grab some of that tear and tape. Just put a little bit on the side here. Okay, I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna hold those a little bit further apart because I want those to stick out further on that piece. So I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in here, but again, I think I'm going to stamp in the red because I've got a lot of green going on here. I've got the green border around this that I think that the red might, actually no, I'm gonna stick with the green. Now that I look at that, I really like the green on there. So I'm going to do the joyful thoughts to you this season. Okay, we're gonna stamp that right inside of this. Try to get that straight. I'm going to bring these down. I'm going to put this one on first, just like that. And then this one I'm going to do over here, just like that. Okay. Now I'm not going to put four dimensionals on this. I think two is fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set this up top. Or, you know what else I was thinking? We could go this way. Ooh, I like that better. Okay, we're gonna do that. When I was creating this card, I wasn't sure which way I liked it going, but now that I see the space, I like it like this. Okay, so let's make sure my card opens the right way before I adhere anything down because God only knows I don't wanna do my image like that and have my card closed on that side. So I'm going to put this right here. Then grab this and place it right up here. That's cute. So the difference is, is because you're probably thinking, well, God, that looks just like that. It, well, it, it does, but it doesn't because I'm not using the green border and I'm using circles. So it is a completely different card, even though it is kind of the same setup, but I think it's still equally just be as beautiful. So there is my second alternative. All right, now for my next card here. For this one, I am bringing in Knight of Navy. This is just one single piece of, it's not a folding card. It's just a single piece of, this is five and a half by four and a quarter. Then I have a layer of that, um, that base that we have, and this is four by five and a quarter. This is gonna go right on top of here. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. Now this is kind of a neat, fancy fold, fun fold, how, whatever you wanna call it. But this is also going to serve a very, very functional um, purpose as well. So there is that. Our next pieces that we need. We need a piece that is nine inches long 
by four and a quarter inches, quarter inches wide. We're gonna score at three. We're gonna score this at three and at six. And then the way this is going to go is we are going to go, we're going to adhere the back on our card, which we could actually do right now. Just the back portion. I'm going to put that right in the center of that. Okay, like so. We're gonna fold this in and then we're gonna fold this back. So it's kind of going to be like a accordion, like a zigzag. So after we do that, we need to make sure we give this a good crease and a good crease over here. Okay, so it's kind of a little springy dingy. So then on the inside, I have a piece of basic white. This measures uh, two and three quarters by four. This is gonna go on the inside. Now, again, I have taken a piece of that. This is actually from this piece here. I've just cut it off of the bottom here. And this measures two and seven eighths by three. This is going to go right like so. But before I do that, I want to grab a, I'm going to see if this is going to work. Um, I'm going to grab the modern oval punch. Now you could use a circle that would work as well. I'm just going to slide this in here kind of watching to make sure that I have it even within here, which I may be off just a hair, but I'm not going to stress. I'm just going to cut that divot out. Can you guys see where I'm going with this? I bet you, you guys are all figuring it out now. Okay, so then with this, I'm going to grab my regular tear and tape. Now you could use regular glue, but the tear and tape that they gave us is extremely wide compared to our normal tear and tape. So I want just the norm. And I'm going to put this right on the very, very edge of this. Let me move this so you guys can see. I'm gonna put that on the very, very edge. I'm gonna do it over here as well right on the edge of that and then right across the bottom again this is where your take your pick tool comes in handy Okay, like so. Then you're gonna come in here and you're going to place this right down at the very, very bottom. Now it's just a touch smaller than your score lines because those are three. That's why I did it two at seven eighths. So this will still fold and be functional because otherwise if it was right at three you would have it sitting right on your score lines and then you're going to have a problem trying to fold it because it's going to get caught up on this score line this folding right here okay so on the front i have a couple different pieces here so i have a piece of coastal cabana which is the same color that we're using in here this is two and three quarters by four same as our little inside white piece. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna open this out and put this on here. Okay, just like that. Then what I have done here is I have taken part of our envelope and I have cut the top piece off, which is what I have right here. So I have that and I can use that for a different project. And then I have come in and I've flipped this over and I've just done a little eighth of an inch off this side and an eighth of an inch off that. And that will flap my envelope straight over on itself. So then I would have a back piece that looks like this. That's that. And then I just cut, once I open that up, I just cut this apart on the score line. So then I have this and that's pretty much garbage. But then I have this beautiful piece here. So what I did was I came in here and I cut this apart. And so this piece here is two and a half by four, uh, three and three quarters. So this is now going to fit right over the top of that to give me my decorative piece. Then, where did I put, oh, then I have my little bird here that I thought would be really kind of cute, either over here on the side or sitting kind of up like so. I'm gonna pop that up. I'm gonna have him right like so. Then again, I have that word Mary that I really wanted to put that, I wanted to incorporate that on the front. So we have the word Merry Christmas. We've got um, Merry Season we could do. We've got Christmas. I don't think Christmas is gonna work because again, it's kind of long. Um, we've got Merry Holidays. Or we just do Mary. Like, do we have to have something else? I don't think so. I think the Mary just kind of looks good by itself. Because you can be merry and festive without having other words, right? You know what I think I might do, though? I was thinking I could take some of these little sprinkles and put on there, but I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. I think I like it on just the white. So I'm just dabbing just a touch of glue on these bigger, wider spots of this. Better not forget the tail here. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm just gonna add that right like so. Now I'm sure you probably have a different sentiment um, set that is for Christmas that you could add something else in here if you wish. But again, it's kind of just, I like it just like that. Okay, then um, actually, you know what? Let's do Mary there and let's do Christmas in here. Ooh, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should we do it in red just like that? I think we should. So let me clean this because I have shaded spruce on there. Okay, let's do Christmas in here. Voila. There we go, Merry Christmas. And look, do you guys see what this is now? Have you guys figured it out? You could take Christmas money and put inside of that. Um, if I had fingernails that I could pull that up. You could do money in there. You could do a gift card in there. It's kind of what the intent is. So I don't have a gift card handy right here. They're inside of my purse, which is inside of the house. I have a business card. 
So there is like gift card ideas. So then when it's closed, they get a kind of a little fancy surprise when they open theirs up. Or again, I mean, you're probably not going to do just $5, but if you do, I mean, anybody would be grateful for anything. So you could do your money in there and it's a little money holder, but super, super cute. Then if you wanted to write more to your recipient, if this is not enough space for you, you could put a white piece back here, four by five and a quarter, and you could do your writing on the back of that. So there is the last card of my alternatives. So let me get this stuff moved out of the way so I can bring in my scrapbook layout. So let me, ouch, don't stab yourself with your snips. Okay, let me get all my garbage off of here. And I'm going to bring this in. So I have already adhered everything, but I will kind of walk you through what I decided to do with this. Oops, don't lose my one little single stamp that I didn't use. So what I, let me see and make sure this is all fitting in frame, which ooh -hoo, I think it's going to. Okay, so what I did with this is I took a Knight of Navy 12 by 12 and then I um, took a piece of gray granite and I cut my gray granite at 11 and a quarter by 11. So it's a full inch off there and then a, uh, or yes, a full inch off the side, the top and the bottom, and then a half inch off the side. Then I took, again, using the card base, for this, I cut this off. So again, when I use the piece here for that card, I took this piece and I cut it in half this way. So since this is five and a half, I cut it at two and three quarters and that's where I put each piece like this on here. And then I just took another little piece from another card that I made and I put it down here at the bottom. Then I took um, from our glitter our glimmer paper stacks. I used, use ways if I can find it now. Just had it out here. Did I put it away? Oh yeah, here it is. I used the white strip um, from the Berry Burst Old Olive in White. So what I did was I cut a half inch strip lengthwise here. I did the same thing with the shaded spruce, which is um, one and a half inches by 10. This is a half inch by 10, my white piece. And then this is probably 10 and a half. So 10 and a half, I cut a piece of Coastal Cabana. Then I took the stamp that has the little like snowflake dots on it. And I Versa marked on there just to give a little touch of texture. Now, you could, because if you want it to look like this paper here, I could have actually used that Versamark and then used my white embossing powder. If I wanted to take it a step further, I could have done that and heat embossed the little snowflakes on there. I then took um, the different papers that we have and I cut them in little tag forms and put that up here. I did the, the green card base, this one here. Again, that little piece that I kept out, I cut that. That is a half inch by, by two inches. And then I did from this piece here, I did a one inch by one inch by one and a quarter inch for this piece. And then my little white piece is one inch um, by a half for that. And then up here at top, I used the same strip and since it was a 12 inch piece, or no, I didn't, I had to cut another piece cause it would have been longer than this. Um, so this is half inch by two and three quarters, the same as these pieces here, or yeah, two and three quarters. And then I have two spots here. These are gonna hold photos. This is going to 
hold a four by four photo and this is going to hold a four by six photo. So typically I would take a white um, scrap piece of paper, like just copy paper or something and put in there so that I know what size my photos are. But I can kind of look at this. So I made these a quarter inch bigger. So this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then this one is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Um, so then my photo will have these blue frames behind it. Then I did kind of the same little thing that I took. I took this, I folded it in half. I took one of these and I simply folded it in half and then I cut on the this way. I cut going that way so then I could give myself a little flagged. I cut it in half and then just adhered it to the back just like I did on that last card. So I gave myself more of a hangover. Then I just used one of the little spruce pieces here and then I did the cute little bird scenery here. So I think I just love the white sparkle shimmer glimmer paper on this. It really kind of makes this pop. But then you've got a lot of those colors that really blend beautifully together, especially since you've got the gray granite inside of your bird that really pops on the gray granite in the back. But then you've got some of the blue in the wings. So everything just really kind of coordinates together. I put just that pop of red down here for this just to kind of bring the little berries out on that as well. So yes, very, very fun, simple, keeping it on the, you know, simple level. This makes a very, very functional two page spread. So I hope you guys enjoyed my alternatives. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the side. I'm going to bring my other three alternatives in so you can see those again. Well, hopefully you can see those again, yep. So maybe if I leave that there, maybe you guys can see it like that. So there are my alternatives. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys have had fun with your kits. If you have created any alternatives, please share them on our private group, Pink Barn Stampers group. We love to see what you guys come up with. It, it, it really inspires others because maybe somebody doesn't want to make all five of each card and maybe they want to kind of spruce it up a little bit. Haha, <laughs> get that pun, spruce. Anyways, they might want to spruce it up and make something different and they have all the pieces and the layers to do so since this comes with so much of the same product. Okay, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. I know we're kind of heading into the weekend. It is Halloween. Be safe out there. Um, enjoy all the kids in their super cute costumes. We are dressed up as the Bob's Burger family. So I will be posting photos of our costumes so um, yes, take care of yourselves. I love you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.